Hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to hack into a WordPress site. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. I uh, do not do this if you do not have permission to do this. For this video, we're going to be attacking Ben's happy little trees. Uh, this is word.senhow.com. So we're going to discuss different methods of getting into a WordPress site. I'm going to show you, you know, which ones are effective, which ones are kind of loud, which ones are quiet. We're going to be doing all of this with a program called WP Scan, and that is a program that comes default loaded in with Kali. So we're going to be using our Kali virtual machine too. So once we're signed into our Kali machine, we're going to type in WP Scan dash dash help. And this will give us a list of all the different uh, flags and parameters that we can use with WP scan. It's very, very extensive, all sorts of different options that you'll have. I'm going to cover a few of them, but feel free to explore the entirety of the software. Uh, there's also an API component. It's it is a pay software that, that you if you're using it commercially and you need to scan a whole bunch of sites, then you know, you can pay to have uh, to use it with the API and that will give you more information, especially when it's trying to enumerate plugins to find out, hey, maybe this person's plugin is a little old, has some vulnerabilities that we can exploit. It'll help enumerate that. It's not a requirement, but for this, we will be using it a little bit because they do have a free API that you can do. I think it gives you like 10 free scans per day or something, which is more than we need. So for that, let's take a look and see what we need for the API. Let's open up our browser, go to a new tab, and we're going to type in WP Scan API into Google. And let's go ahead and open up this site. And what we can do is we can look at their pricing for the researcher package, which is what we're going to be using. It's actually 25 API calls per day, which is more than enough for what we're going to be needing. Uh, so the only thing we need to do is to sign up and get our API key. So once you've signed up, you go under profile, you should see your API key right here. We can go ahead and copy this guy and let's head back over to our Kali machine. Let's open up a mouse pad and let's paste and let's paste our API key here. So we're going to be using this uh, later on and when we're doing different scans. And before we start, I just want to let you know that I will be providing you with a cheat sheet. So if you look down in the description below, there'll be a, a document uh, that you can go and read all the different commands that you can use, as well as kind of just a brief description that should help you so you don't have to, to remember everything that we're doing here. So let's start out with just kind of a basic scan, right? I'm going to make this just a tad bit smaller so we have a little bit of room to work with. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do WP scan dash dash URL. And here's my site, HTTP colon slash slash word dot senhow.com. And if you ever get this prompt that you haven't updated your database in a while, heck, go ahead and do it, man. Didn't take too long. And now we've started our scan. So I want you to take note of one of the last lines here. It says no WP scan API token was given. That means we did not supply it with the token that we like, went ahead and signed up for. So it did not give us our vulnerability data. So I want you to see, you know, we got this information. There's a lot of really good information here that we're going to work with. So there's a couple of different ways we can go about getting into a WordPress site. You know, we could brute force the username and password, try to enumerate that, see if we can get guess the password. But one of the most effective ways is also targeting the plugins that person is using. Are they really out of date? Do they have vulnerabilities? Ones that we can use to exploit and get us access. That can sometimes be a lot more quiet and a lot more sneaky than constantly hammering away at an account trying to guess the password and hoping that they picked something simple that we already know about. We will be doing that method here in a little bit, but let's do the plugin method first and let's use our API key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to our command here and I'm going to leave the URL specified. 
and I'm going to be a, do a dash E for enumerate. I'm going to enumerate the VP. And again, I'll have all this and the page uh, down below, but it basically just means vulnerable plugins. Also going to specify my plugin detection method as mixed. And then I'm going to specify my API token. And that's where I'm going to copy my API token, paste it here. And let's run this and see how this goes. So this scan can take a few minutes. So just be patient while it does try to attempt to uh, detect, you know, vulnerable plugins. And let's see if we can use that in order to gain access to the site. So it did detect a robots text, which can be a great place to find some really cool information. So when we open that up, we can see that there's a couple of things that are not allowed by search engines. We're seeing that the WP admin is not allowed as a default setting for WordPress. But if there was anything in else interesting in here, this is a great place to check. Also, if you're doing a CTF, definitely check out this robots text file. We can usually find hints and things like that in their uh, folders that they're trying to keep secret from search engines. One thing we we'll want to pay attention to is the version of WordPress that's running. So we've identified this as also being insecure because it was released a long time ago. There's been patches and fixed and fixed vulnerabilities, uh, especially for this version of of WordPress. So WP Scan has also identified some vulnerabilities and given us links to those vulnerabilities. But one thing that you'll notice here is that uh, some of them will say like admin plus or contributor plus. This is because you have to have this kind of like basic uh, user permissions in the system. If you see one that says unauthenticated, that's a little bit more promising, but not always a guaranteed in. So let's take a look at this unauthenticated stored XSS. And XSS means cross site scripting. Um, if you're unsure what that is, do a little bit of Googling. Or if you have a Try Hack Me a subscription, take a look at their, uh, they have an like, entire course on cross site scripting. It's some very, very interesting stuff, but also very, very, uh, very, very bad to find in a production environment. So let's look at this. So this is unauthenticated stored cross site scripting. Let's right click on this guy and let's open this link. All right. So this one kind of describes a little bit what's going on as well as a proof of concept, which is definitely what we want to find. Any of these that you find here, any vulnerabilities, finding a proof of concept is going to save you so much time. Uh, it says that it can be done by an unauthenticated user but certain settings have to be in place. They have to be doing a certain thing. They have to have post with an avatar block and have enabled user link to profile, open a new tab, not uncommon settings. Let's jump in here into my um, Ben's little happy trees. So we are a contributor. Our name is Bob and we're a contributor on this site. We have very limited permissions. According to this, our contributor, what you need to do is you need to edit your profile and you need to put the following payload as your first name. So we'll copy this. This is going to be our first name. And then it says, and then select the display name with the payload in it and hit save. So if we come in here, let's go under our profile. Let's change our first name. We'll paste this in here. Then we're going to scroll down and you see where it says display name publicly as Bob. We're going to change that to this little bit of code. So let's save this. All right, that part is done. Now, what do we have to do? Now it says create a post, add an avatar block, enable link to profile and open a new tab. This can be the default for some WordPress sites, but not all the time. So let's go ahead and make sure that this happens. We're going to add a new post. We're going to do your site is 
We're going to add an avatar block. When we click on this avatar block on the right hand side over here. We can see where it says linked to profile. Open a new tab. Let's save this draft and let's go back. And it says, all right, so we've done this and it says, or we can add this as a code block, but we're not going to do that. And it says the cross site script will be triggered when any user either views the post or previews. That means all we have to do is preview the post. We don't even need to, to, to publish it. Let's open it up. Here we go. This is the, the sign that you're looking for that a cross site scripting attack is successful. Cross site scripting means that I'm able to run a script on this web server that was not intended by WordPress. And a script like this can do all sorts of damage. You can run scripts that, you know, will elevate your permission, give you access, run a, a remote connection that reaches out to your computer that allows you to, to establish a terminal session and, and do all sorts of really, really bad things. This is not what we want to see. And we've got from here, we got to hear from just having a contributor account. So never want to see this, but it also means success. If you are working with somebody as a pen tester and you were able to produce a, a result like this, then that is an immediate win. Or if it's a bug bounty, same thing. There's not too many vulnerabilities that are going to do us too much good that don't require us to be a contributor, contributor or a uh, admin. So let's keep scrolling down. We did do an aggressive and passive kind of plugin scan and to see it and search for any sort of vulnerabilities on the plugins that we have installed. So there's some stuff in here, and but think of the same way: a uh, contributor plus that requires you to be a contributor. So it's going to be it's going to be very similar to the vulnerabilities that were actually in the WordPress installation themselves. So something to keep in mind when you are looking for different sort of attacks. Um, again, we have a cross site scripting attack. So with this one, it's saying the version could not be determined, but there is one vulnerability for this plugin, but it was all the way back in version 3.15 latest is five. So we're probably looking at a decent amount of time. If I look at the CVE. It says CVE-2015. So is our site really running a version of this plugin from that long ago? Probably not, especially when you factor in the version of WordPress that we're using. The, word, the version of WordPress that we're using was 2023. So, you know, probably a nothing burger. You're welcome to investigate that, but honestly, probably not gonna waste my time. Uh, scrolling down again, I am not a I don't have any roles in this system quite yet. So I'm going to assume that probably not going to work. Uh, let's see here. We have Google Analytics. This version is, is out of date, uh, saying that we're in 8.2. And this is a possible vulnerability we could take a look at. And again, don't hesitate to explore all the options. This plugin is vulnerable to unauthorized access due to missing capabilities. Check and version of this possible for authenticated attackers with a subscriber level access and above to perform unauthorized uh, action. Uh, we have to have an account. So the question is, do we have a system that is going to allow us to register? A lot of WordPress sites don't allow you to register, which kind of like kicks this one. So each one is going to be a little different. Each circumstance, each scenario, just a tad bit different. Right, let's keep going down. I have more contributors, vulnerabilities, sure. But I'm going to need a certain level of access to already do any sort of damage. And the rest of these are contributors and admins. So what's our other option with uh, WP scan? Well, we could try to enumerate the users. Maybe we do more of a user attack. So with a user attack, we don't really need to provide the API. We're not going to be looking for vulnerabilities. We're going to be targeting the people that are actually running this site. The first thing we need to know is what is their usernames? It's not going to do us much good if we can't identify that. So let's do a WP scan. And let's back over this API. What I want to do is I want to enumerate 
users. Right, so here's the users that we found. We found there's a Ben Jones there. Uh, there's a, just a user, looks like admin, and there's looks like there's Bob. So what we can do is there's an admin account. That's a big no-no right there, but we do have one. So let's see how secure admin's password is. Then. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a loud attack. And if they have any sort of security in place, you may end up finding yourself blocked. So obviously we may want to run this from a VPN connection, something we can rotate out our IP address. But let's do a brute force attack on admin. So I'm not going to enumerate this time around. We are going to do an attack. I'm going to give it a passwords file. And we're going to work from rockyou.txt. Rockyou.txt is a huge text file full of passwords. It's a little bit older. There are new versions of Rockyou out there. But let's try the most basic ones first. And I want to have the username of admin. So we're performing a password attack on the admin user. Let's see what we get. There is a lot of passwords in this file. So this is probably going to take a while. This is also one of those attacks that you just kind of leave running. You walk away and you hope for the best. So check it out. We have a valid combination found. Admin and, pa and the uh, password is admin123 exclamation point exclamation point. Let's open this up. Let's head off to our WordPress site. We're going to go to wp-admin. Let's try admin, admin, one, two, three, exclamation, exclamation, and question, question. So that was easy, right? Well, it's probably not always going to be that easy. Now, obviously, someone chose a really poor password, but it does happen. Now, a lot of the newer versions of WordPress may also have you know, an MFA uh, plugin set up so that even if the password was known, yeah, you still have to get past the MFA part. But for an old site like this, uh, where brute force uh, is approved, we were able to eventually try the uh, so many passwords that we got a right one. So what'd you think? This definitely isn't the, one of the, the only ways to you know, attack a WordPress site or pretty much any website. There's also directory fuzzing, which means you're looking for certain folders under, underneath the web server. But with WordPress, there's a couple of things you always want to target. You want to target the vulnerabilities of the system, either the WordPress installation itself, perhaps a plugin, or even a theme that they might be running. There might be a theme that's out there, has been updated, maybe the author abandoned it, and now it's vulnerable to certain attacks. A WordPress scanner will definitely help you find that. And if all those fails, you could start out with just getting all the users and looking for a weak password. And you know, maybe you are able to compromise an account that is at least a contributor. And then you just roll in that other, you know, attack, maybe something else. So pivot and move towards, you know, other possible avenues of attack. So hope this was helpful for you and at least get you started on thinking about how to gain access to web servers, whether it be WordPress or pretty much any other, you know, like CMS that's out there. And that's content management system. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. And I really am excited about doing more of these security videos. I think they're a lot of fun. I don't know about you, but cybersecurity is definitely where one of my biggest passions lies. Really appreciate you guys watching and talk to you next time.